classic rivalry, a championship, and a BCS Bowl all wrapped into one festive package. The Big 12 Championship features Oklahoma's Ryan Broyles, a finalist for the Bolitnikoff Award as the best receiver in college football. He'll frequently face off against Nebraska's Prince Amukamara, a finalist for the Thorpe Award as the top defensive back. Showtime in Texas. Texas goes to Pasadena. So many memories of Big 12 championship games. In zone out lines. Touchdown, touchdown. Got it. The Aggies upset Kansas State. Got to throw it. Got it wide open, baby. And so fitting that the final championship game features two rivals connected across time. He's all the way home. Across borders. Before the Republic was even formed. But territory is still turf home soil, and the schools that stand on it are symbols of the proud states they serve. So when these teams meet, there's more than a game on the line, even when the Big 12 title is at stake like today. No, this one is about legacies and long-held grudges. This is Exhibit A for rivalry, for what the word truly means. This is Oklahoma versus Nebraska, the land, the people, and their teams. You are looking live at Cowboys Stadium in Arlington, Texas. Tonight, for the final time, Oklahoma and Nebraska will play for a Big 12 championship. Folks, we welcome you to the Dr. Pepper Big 12 Championship on ABC. This, of course, is one of the great rivalries in the history of college football. And the winner tonight advances to the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl in Glendale, Arizona, where they are expected to play either the Big East representative or Stanford for the Pac-10. And what a day it has been already. Our championship matchup is all set. And what a high-scoring game we are in for on the night of January 10th. Congratulations to both Auburn and Oregon, who will play for the national title. Good evening, everybody. I'm Brad Musburger with Kirk Herb Street. It's a fans matchup. Going to be a real high-scoring game. Can't wait to get to Glendale. <laughs> I cannot wait for that game. We have a great game tonight, but in Glendale, we got to match up that a lot of people wanted to see the big, powerful Auburn team coming out of the SEC against the speed of Chip Kelly and the Oregon Ducks. It's going to be a lot of fun to break that one down for the next month or so. Well, let's talk about the one tonight, the Big 12 title. Taylor Martinez, you were down to the field with Bo Pelini. What's the status of the Nebraska quarterback? Uh, they're going to obviously give him a chance to go tonight, and it's really important that he stays healthy. He missed the game last week against Colorado. He's got a turf toe and a high ankle sprain that he's trying to deal with. They said he's had a great week of practice. His ability to run effectively is not only important, but also his ability to throw the ball. I think Oklahoma's going to crowd the line of scrimmage and try to take away Martinez, Roy Hallou, Rex Burkhead in that Nebraska running game. Martinez is going to have to make some plays with his arm. Hey, we had some bedlam fun last week, didn't he? I'll tell you, Landry Jones really grew up in that second half. I think that's the best way to put it. He really had a chance to show his resiliency, and I thought he stepped up and delivered early in that game. Got to give Oklahoma State a lot of credit. They really disguised some coverages, created some problems, took away a lot of the underneath routes, and I think it affected Landry Jones in the rhythm that he was trying to get into. And of course, there's a great play there by the Cowboys. But how about the second half, especially in the fourth quarter? Finds Cam Kenny for a big touchdown, and then the next series they come back with a great call by Kevin Wilson and find James Hanna. I think it affected Landry Jones in a positive way. And Nebraska, one of the toughest pass defenses in college football, they're going to take away all the underneath routes. I think Landry Jones' decision-making, running the football, and getting the ball thrown downfield vertically the way they did late in the game last week will be something that's big for the Sooners. Bo Pelini would probably prefer a defensive struggle here. Yes, he would. I think he would. Anytime that Bo Pelini can get his team, a team that loves to possess the football and play great defense in that kind of game, it plays into his favor. All right, Herbie. This, of course, the last year of a championship game. They will go to 10 teams next year, round robin, no title game. Ready to come out behind the Sooner Schooner now. The Oklahoma Sooners looking for still another Big 12 championship and another meeting in a BCS game. Nebraska pours out. And now the Sooners.
Red is the color of the night, folks. Two of the great programs in the history of this great game. Both with more than 800 wins, 12 national championships between them. And their coach, Bo Pelini of the Cornhuskers, is down below with Holly Rose, the third member of the team tonight. So let's go to Holly. Coach, you joked this week that you wanted to wait until the last possible moment to decide what to do at quarterback. What, to have to do, what decision have you made? Uh, Taylor's going to start, and he's ready to go. Well, he's uh, feeling good, and uh, obviously he's our starter. That's who we're going with, and uh, he's ready to rock and roll. Your other major injury, Niles Paul, means everything to you in your kick return game. How do you replace him tonight? Well, you know, you, you can never replace a guy like Niles, but we got capable guys that are come in and gives them a chance to step up. They did that last week. I expect them to do it again. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. Thank you, Holly. And to update everybody on the Oklahoma injuries on the left, DeMarco Murray injured in the Bedlam game, and he's practiced well this week. Nelson returns to that secondary for Oklahoma, so both are expected to play here today. Final piece of the BCS puzzle is about to unfold. This is Madhu just across the goal line. Good return and a penalty flag comes flying on the opening kickoff. So we have Landry Jones now coming out. Brent Landry Jones, we talked about in the open, what he was able to do, face some adversity last week, 468 yards with four touchdowns. We'll see if he can gain that momentum where he left off in Stillwater. Remember, against Nebraska, matchup zone, which essentially means a lot of man-to-man -man coverage that's very physical. He'll have to be patient tonight in the passing game. The pistol offense with the quarterback four yards back and the tailback directly behind him. Millard is number 33, the fullback. DeMarco Murray runs in that direction and Nebraska slams him down as we take a look at our impact players presented by Dr. Pepper. He is a good one. Yeah, he sure is. DeMarco Murray is going to give it a go. Of course, a little bit dinged up last week. He has to make it happen. And Ryan Broyles, the Blitnikoff finalist. DeMarco's second carry, and this will put them in in third and mid-range with Pierre Allen making the stop. Folks, remember a year ago? Do you remember how Nebraska choked this game down, kicked four field goals, forced Texas to go right to the final second before they relinquished? Well, look for the Polinis to try and shrink this game down here. If they can do that, it is third and five. Four down linemen. Landry steps away from pressure and throws incomplete, however, over Murray's head, and it's three and done. You know, even when Nebraska doesn't come up with a sack, they want to make Landry Jones uncomfortable, and that time they were able to do that with Meredith coming around from the outside, Jared Crick getting some penetration, just making Landry Jones feel their presence and try to disrupt his rhythm with his wide receivers. Two fine punters here tonight. Way averaging better than 41 yards. Rex Burkhead, the all-purpose back, awaits this. 25, elects not to go for the fair catch, and he is down at the 22-yard line. And Taylor Martinez, who was injured in the Texas A&M game when his own lineman stepped high on that ankle, and wouldn't you know it, he also injured his toe on that play when it scuffed across the turf down at College Station. Hello, big hole in the middle, nine yards as they go up the gut, and Jonathan Nelson makes his first stop. As we take a look at these impact players, Herbie, presented by Dr. Pepper. And Roy Hulu's going to have to have a big night taking some of the pressure off of Martinez with that injury. And, you know, with Niles Paul down, Kyler Reed in the passing game from Nebraska against a, a defense from Oklahoma that's determined to stop the run running game. Reed, 25, has got to have a good night as well. 
deflected incomplete on the pass, and that was Ronell Lewis, number 56. Now, we all talk about the other linebacker, Travis Lewis. This youngster played well against Okie State, too. And yeah, they've moved him up to defensive end because of the speed that he can provide on the pass rush, and he's held up very well. Very explosive off the edge to be on the other side of Jeremy Beal. Martinez, remember, is an outstanding runner. Number three. He has rushed for almost 1,000 yards this year. You wonder about his running ability with the ankle. So he'll come back with Burkhead for the first down. So Sean Watson upstairs calling the plays here tonight for the Cornhuskers. And, of course, this speaks to the Nebraska strength. Get first downs. You've got a great kicking game. Rely on your defense. Don't let this gaudy Oklahoma offense climb into high gear immediately. Big part of this game tonight will be Nebraska's offensive line, not just sustaining blocks with the defensive line. They've got to get a hat on a helmet at the second level and be able to take care of those athletic linebackers from Oklahoma. Kalu is back on the field, as Holly reported. And a big haul. Bust to daylight. Midfield. 40. Foot race. Free. One man to beat. Nebraska strikes first. 66 yards. As good as Oklahoma has been on defense this year, they've given up more big runs than anybody in the Big 12 this year. Jeremiah Searles, the left tackle, gets a great block. And how about the speed of Halu, who just checked himself out of the game and tells Holly Rowley, got a little bit of a ding on the outside of that knee, and comes right back into the game and gives the, the Cornhuskers a big lift. 52 consecutive extra points this year for Alex Henry. Folks, that's a story down there. That's the first time in two championship games here in Texas Stadium that Nebraska has scored a touchdown. Highway 66 all the way. The big screen here, high above the field. The receiver, Trey Franks, back deep for the Sooners. yards deep he'll take a knee and back to the touchdown Irving. well Nebraska's coach has told us the importance of their linemen getting up to the second level watch the left guard 68 Keith Williams do a good job initially with Frank Alexander then picking up the big block right there on Austin box and the great vision that time by Halu he started to the outside came back in right off the block by Keith Williams and Jeremiah Searles block outstanding and it's a textbook the way you draw it up if you're Sean Watson as you get ready for this game They'll come from the left hash. DeMarco Murray still on the field. He already has carried four times for 12 yards here tonight. On first down, Landry Jones fires to the far side, complete, and that was Broyles making his first catch of the night. First time we've seen the timing between Jones and Broyles in this game. It's going to be an ongoing battle for Ryan Broyles to try to battle for position to try to get open against this very physical man-to-man -man coverage from Nebraska. Now a much tighter look at the formation. And on second down, they run Murray into it for about a yard and a half. And this is going to bring up another third down for the Sooners. Well, these Nebraska linebackers, Brent, when they see an eye formation, they, as soon as Landry Jones comes back to hand the ball off, they are immediately tacking downhill to try to take away DeMarco Murray. Dennard backs off. Incomplete, and the receiver appeared to be down. Royals. Yeah, he, he was not touched, Brent. I think he just slipped. He was trying to make a little bit of a move on Gomes to inside to the outside, and he just lost his, his footing and fell on his back. Unfortunately for Oklahoma, third down and short. Who are you looking to if you're Landry Jones? Of course, Ryan Royals. So that is the second three and out for the Sooners here against this Nebraska defense. This is the kind of game that Bo Pelini wanted. 
Way is back. Fielded by Marlowe. Marlowe to daylight. Great field position. They can go to work, eat a little clock up here in the first quarter. You're watching the Dr. Pepper Big 12 Championship between Oklahoma and Nebraska on ABC. Rex Burkhead, the running back, Hello, who scored the touchdown and picked up about two yards. And Thank you, Robert. Cat formation. Burkhead, remember, threw two touchdown passes. One out of this formation, I believe, against Colorado. And he is short of that first down marker. Nelson makes a stop. We go down below to Holly Rowe. Nebraska's athletic trainer Mark Mayer told me that Taylor Martinez spent about five hours a day the last week in rehab trying to get ready for this game. For a sprained right ankle, he would work on an Alter G treadmill, which has pressurized airbags to lower you to 1% of your body weight on the ankle, up to 80%. He did work in the pool, and then for that left toe that's a sprained joint, he had him pick up a marble and set it down over and over to do modality exercises for the toe. Yeah, and Holly, they're telling me, the Nebraska coaches, that that toe was bothering him more than the ankle injury following the Texas A&M game. Incomplete on that pass as he rifled it to the left. Brandon Kinney, the intended target. And what's interesting is, and they told us the same thing, the toe is a concern, but he's not run the football yet. He has one carry, which essentially was a sack, minus nine yards. So it's one thing to have him in lineup. It's another thing to see how effective he will be because his explosiveness early in the year, that was the identity of Nebraska's offense through the first five or six weeks. Well, they did not eat up much time, did they? But here comes the race field goal kicker, Alex Henry, 16 of 17 this year. On its way. Puts him up 10 to nothing with a 53 yard field goal. We welcome you back to Texas Stadium. Nebraska with the lead. Kunalik with the kickoff. And another knee in the end zone. This one by Madu. Kirby, what a leg Henry had. How fitting to be in an NFL stadium and watch Alex Henry kick the ball. We've been watching him do it for years, but this is from 53. Look at that. Look at that. That's good from 63, maybe 70. He crunched that ball. Now there's a little bit of heat on the offensive side of Oklahoma. They've got to find a way to move the ball against this defense that Herbie's been describing. And if you want to watch these linebackers attack that line of scrimmage, they're going to try Roy Finch right now as the running back. Now they'll motion out of it. Got one on one. Nakamura, they'll throw against him and a great move that time by Cameron Kinney. Kenny drove off number 21 and came back for the completion. That is a major accomplishment by Landry Jones and more importantly, Cam Kenny being able to get that separation from Amu Kamara, who's one of the top corners, if not the top corner in college football. He did a good job of taking him deep, selling it deep, and then coming back to the football. 16 yards for the first and 10 for the Sooners. They're on the Nebraska side of the 50 now. Motion and Landry's going to keep it up on top. Nobody open. He'll take off. Slides down to the 40 yard line. Picked up four. This Oklahoma offense is out of sync. It's just out of sorts. And right now, going to the diamond formation and even having the motion with Finch, it's the best rhythm and best offense we've seen so far early in this football game for Oklahoma. And they go back to it again. And they run Finch, the freshman, out of it. And he comes free for the first down. Squirts through there. That's, that's what Roy Finch has built a name for himself on as a true freshman. His ability to look like he's, looks like he's going to be down. He doesn't give up. Second, third effort, picks up the first down. So they're going to stay in this formation. Kevin Wilson says, why not? It's working. DeMarco Murray is going to cut back himself. And he's to the 30-yard line, picking up about four. Haig makes the stop. Kevin Wilson, I think, making a good move here, just trying to change it up here as a play caller. This goes all the way back to last year, some of their struggles with Landry Jones against Nebraska. Hand off to Finch, who's brought down. 
Paul Pellini trying to stay on top of his game on that other side. If the offense goes to the mock speed, it is very hard for a defensive coordinator, of course, to substitute. And he has to keep an eye on what the Sooners are doing as he calls the defensive signal, but more importantly, the substitution pattern. Third down now. Here is Finch banging ahead toward that first down marker. If you're just tuning in and watching Oklahoma for the first time, you're, you're talking about an offense that averages 336 yards a game through the air. They're known for their ability to spread you out and throw, but they feel maybe a bit overmatched against Nebraska's defense outside. Well, Herbie, we come to the end of the first quarter, and quickly they go for the first down. How about that? Nebraska leads at 10 nothing. This presentation of the Dr. Pepper Big 12 Championship will return after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Just going back to that last play to end the fourth quarter. Gomes comes around, unblocked, makes a huge play. Pierre Allen helps clean it up, and Oklahoma ends up missing on fourth and one. So the first quarter was dominated by Nebraska. Oklahoma twice went for it on fourth down. Twice they failed. They were one of six on third down. Now you would find it hard to believe, but Martinez is 0 of 3 throwing the ball. But if you just joined us, a 66-yard touchdown run by Roy Hallou and a 53-yard field goal by Henry has boosted the Huskers to a 10-point lead. Now, after the six-yard gain, they come back second and four. And Burkhead is slammed down at the line of scrimmage as we take a look at our Pacific Life game summary. And again, this is certainly the kind of game that Bo Pelini wants, dominated by defense. Yeah, he's been able to do that because they have shut down Landry Jones and his group of wide receivers, and they've won the battle at the line of scrimmage against Oklahoma's ability to try to run the football. It's a yeah. big third down here, Brent. And Herbie, yeah, Jones is 5 of 9 for 51 yards. Martinez, we told you, is 0 of 3. But here he is in a passing situation. Here's his fourth pass, knocked down, incomplete on the play as Jamel Fleming jumps it. Well, Fleming's probably one of the quickest defensive backs that Oklahoma has, and that time he was able to break on the ball. This should favor. Anytime Martinez is in an obvious passing situation, Oklahoma is cheating up. Fleming gets in there to knock that football away from the big tight end, Cotton. Broyles, who has had all kinds of trouble tonight, Handling punts is back deep again. And in this building, Henry can really get him up in the air, and it's very busy back in the end zones. Broyles feels it cleanly at the 18. Shakes the first one, and then out of bounds at the 22. So can Oklahoma mount a scoring drive? We'll find out when you come back. So Landry Jones struggling. Deflected, intercepted. Courtney Osborne on the deflection, and the Cornhuskers are in business again. But Landry Jones at this point, through the first quarter and working ourselves into the second quarter, they are not getting good separation. Royals matched up with David, who's a linebacker, the leading tackler. See how Moore got his big hand up to knock that ball down. But Royals does not give up on the play. Here comes a convoy right at him, too. But he, he, yeah, he shows a lot of heart, a lot of effort to try to make this play. But as we've shown you, it does look like Osborne's left knee did touch. If Makamara had taken Broyles out with a block. They might have scored a touchdown, but he didn't want to have a block in the back right. on the interception, so he kind of pulls away from it, understandably so. Now we see if Oklahoma's defense could step up here. Remember, Taylor Martinez last series had a chance to run the football and ran it, but Burkhead looks like he's going to come in for the direct snap. So they are going to go to the Wildcat formation. Burkhead was very successful with this. Remember, he threw out of it against Colorado. Read option, Burkhead. He muscles his way behind the right side of that offensive line. Trying to find big Keith Williams, the left guard.
essentially just a power play from the shotgun formation with a direct snap to Burkhead. Burkhead, who played high school quarterback his sophomore and junior year. You mentioned the two touchdown passes last week against Colorado. First two attempts in his college career, two touchdowns. It's a pretty good deal. Got a second down and about three. The penalty helping greatly here. They're going to stick with that formation. Burkhead looking to pass, stumbles, touchdown! Burkhead hits. Kyler Reed, the sophomore from Shawnee, Kansas, for the score. That's his third touchdown pass in three passing attempts. That's not bad. That's the way he gets started, right, as a Wildcat quarterback coming in. Everybody thinks you're going to run the football. And I'll tell you what, Kyler Reed, who has amazing speed for a tight end, watch him as a wing back on the right. Watch him settle down back away from the defense. See how he just kind of settles down? And even a running back slash quarterback like Burkhead appreciates a receiver that breaks down his route like that in the open space. Everybody adds the extra point. Well, that's making the most out of your first completed pass. Your quarterback is 0 for 4, but your running back goes 1 for 1 and a touchdown. Oklahoma, Herbie needs a spark here, something to go in. The game is being dominated by the Corn Huskers. Of course, Robert, if Connecticut's win holds up, it'll be up to the Orange Bowl to decide if they want UConn to play the ACC. If not, they will go to the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl and play the winner here. Landry Jones, confusion a little bit in the backfield, but they make the completion. <laughs> best play of the game. Best play of the game is right. <laughs> Kevin Wilson call that baby again. <laughs> a little misdirection yeah. there. <laughs> a little confusion there by Landry Jones on which way to have the play fake, and it maybe confused Nebraska a little bit, but uh, one of the best passes so far for Jones. Here's DeMarco Murray. So that's what they have to do. DeMarco Murray and this offensive line, have, they've got to be able to win that battle. And they've, and they've had their lunch handed to them in his first half. They're not going to have success with the dinking and the dunking and the rhythm passing between Jones and his receivers. And if that's not the case, you've got to get physical, which this Oklahoma offensive line has not done all year. They've got to get physical and try to get a push against Nebraska. 27 plays and 109 yards for Oklahoma. 18 and 84 for Nebraska. But the scoreboard's one sided. Here comes Murray again. Crosses midfield and out of bounds. Gomes. Uh, here, now we're starting to see a little bit of rhythm here. And I'll tell you, the tight end, Rattery, 47, does a good job sustaining his block against Pierre Allen. Millard coming around, leading the way. And also Ryan Broyles involved, picking up a nice block. Madu into the backfield, number 17. So it's been a steady diet of Murray and Finch. And now it'll be number 17 on first and 10. Play action. Downfield, down the middle. The freshman. Touchdown, Oklahoma. Kitty Stills takes it in. It's a 49-yard scoring strike. Jones to Stills. for the one play to ignite the offense. Landry Jones and the Sooners come up with it. Jimmy Stevens. Now 46 of 46 this year on extra points. Brendan Kenny Stills is on the outside. And this play is set up by the runs that they just had some success with. Here is Stills. He's just going to come down and get behind Austin Cassidy. Cassidy in the middle third of the defense cannot let anybody get behind him. A little bit of a play action fake to Mur or to Madu, and they go right over top of Cassidy. The ball under thrown a bit, but because of Stills' speed and the fact he was going right by him, he was able to adjust to the football, and Cassidy looks late. By then, it's too late, and Stills, the true freshman, does a good job of focusing and making that big catch. That was right on the money, wasn't it? Sure that was. Throw? Yep. it off and it's going to be fielded by Marlowe. Marlowe from the seven yard line. And a lane to the 30. Okay, Herbie. 
Taylor Martinez now outside, and that's Reed. And Reed picks up a first down at the 46-yard line. Nice. Well, we talked about with Niles Paul being down. I mentioned as an impact player, I thought Kyler Reed had to step up the sophomore. Now he's 6'3", 230, and he plays tight end, but he's kind of a slot receiver, and they flex him out as a tight end. Runs a 4-5, and he can be a mismatch against safeties and linebackers, and it's a guy that Martinez is looking to tonight. They're going to play action. Martinez is going to throw it. Got a man wide open. A beautiful play call, and McNeil battles inside the 10-yard line. That is shades of what the Texas Longhorns did in the first Big 12 championship game against Nebraska. Brad, it's also shades of what we saw last week by Kevin Wilson, the offensive coordinator from Oklahoma, calling it against Oklahoma State. A great time and a gutsy call by Sean Watson to find McNeil getting behind coverage and Quentin Carter for a huge first down. On fourth down, play action and throw for it. Burkhead back in the Wildcat. Picks his way for a couple of yards and second down coming up plenty of time. We, we were kind of kidding about that throw by Burkhead. It's not bad average. Three three attempts, three touchdowns. But you know, if you're an Oklahoma defensive back, you're looking at film all week. You're aware. You've been told by Brent Venables, hey, don't forget 22 now. He can throw down inside the 10-yard line. And now already in this game. So that's in the back of their mind, which also helps when you're just trying to run the football with Burkhead. Brother to brother. Two of the eight children who grew up in the Pelini family in Youngstown. Second down and goal. Offensive line gives him plenty of time. Can't find a target. Now he's in trouble. Cuts back. Shakes a would-be tackler. Throws to the middle. It's intercepted. Can't throw back across your body. Picked off by Travis Lucent. Oh, the young man's got to learn on that. That is so dangerous. Across your body to the middle of the end zone. You and I were feeling the same thing there as we're watching this play unfold. And by the way, he's got his wiggle back. He's got the juice back with his speed. Good job of trying to keep the play alive. Look who's trying to chase him down. Ron L. Lewis throws the ball back. And I'll tell you, as a quarterback, even though he's a freshman, as soon as that ball left his hand right there, he wanted to have a string on it to be able to draw it back. And Travis Lewis, one of the veterans of the Sooners defense, makes a huge play. Now, Oklahoma will try to make Nebraska pay for that mistake. First down and 10, trailing him by 10. Jones, looking far side, dumps back to Hannah over the middle. He's got great speed. He showed it last week. Ball loose on the sideline, out of bounds. They were the last team to have possession, so they will retain the football. The other adjustment that Kevin Wilson has to like is after that last series, I think there's confidence now in the Sooners offensive line. Look at the time that Jones has to throw. The last couple series, the Oklahoma offensive line starting to assert itself much better for Landry Jones in his Sooners offense. So here's your diamond look. Murray and Finch both there. Fakes the swing, looking downfield. Now drops it off and complete defense working that sideline. He was a safety valve and the chains move. Remember, they just put this offense in the last few weeks and they're still trying to work out some of the kinks with the play action pass game. You can see he's out of sync with Ryan Broyles and you mentioned a safety valve. Finch continues down the sideline and finds a little opening and, Broyles, and uh, Landry Jones finds him. 3.39 to go here in the first half. Play action, high and incomplete. Smart. Both his receivers on that side, Millard and the big tight end who's been making a few catches so far, Rattery, both covered very well. He just threw the ball away. Picked up five yards on first down because of the penalty. So now they're facing second and five. Poise of Landry Jones will come into play tonight just like it did last week when he faced some adversity. Oklahoma with 245 yards of offense to 146 for Nebraska. This will be the 39th snap. The Sooners had 107 snaps last week against Okie State from the pistol. Hand it off to Murray. 
And he appears to be short of that first down. So here we come up with a fourth down again. Do not see any sign that Stevens is going to come onto the field here. They are down. Let me check that. That's uh, third down. I think I was wrong here. This is third down now. Third down and two. Jet motion. Landry tosses. Incomplete. That's waved off. That's incomplete. Hannah, the intended target. And now we've got a fourth down. And now the field goal unit is coming out. Jimmy Stevens trots on at the field. Pretty pretty good coverage again by Gomes, and these windows continue to be very tight for Landry Jones. I think this, you know, Bob, Sto Bob Stoops known to typically go for it whenever he has a chance, but the way this game has gone back and forth, and the way it was one-sided early, if Jimmy Stevens could hit this field goal, you're within a touchdown, considering the way things have gone in the first half, Bob Stoops has to go for the field goal here. Yeah, 26 yarder. He put it down to one score if we can hit this. Stevens was hot last week. Stays hot. Well, this is what started it all. The interception, Herbie. Yeah, they came up with a big play after the mistake by Martinez throwing back against his body over the middle of the defense late, which is a no-no. Lewis came up with the interception. Then the great call by Kevin Wilson on fourth down. And I thought Landry Jones did a good job. Not the fastest quarterback, but he really sold it and had a lot of room to be able to pick up the first down. They don't pick up the first later in the drive. They have to settle for the field goal. It's really a six-point swing. Absolutely. Just what we expected with these two great rivals. Remember the old days when the Big Eight, Oklahoma, Nebraska, Nebraska, Oklahoma, they play for the championship right around Thanksgiving. A little bit of Chris snow Schenkel, coming down. Bud Wilkinson. The best. It was great. Brent Musburger making a few <laughs> I remember that like it was back in high school. Did a few. I think it was a real when Barry Switzer closed out against Osborne. I think we had a miserable, miserable day in Norman. We had a seven-nothing ball game, if you can believe it. Remember you made Joel McAvicka had a big call one time for you, I remember. Yes, indeed. Well, they have been down by double digits four straight times as Nebraska hands it off here to a hello fumble. Sooners have got it. With two minutes almost left on the clock, they've got a scoring opportunity. Travis Lewis, who made the interception, has now recovered the fumble. Travis Lewis has given them another scoring opportunity. Uh, this has been a problem all year long for Nebraska. They have 37 fumbles on the year, and they've only lost 12 of them. This time, they end up losing another one, and it's Travis Lewis again, as you mentioned, Brent, one of the leaders, one of the captains, the guy that has to make plays when it looked like maybe Oklahoma would be happy to be down seven going in at half. Now they got a chance to try to tie it up. Now the black shirts will try to dig in for Nebraska. Murray's the running back. Oklahoma with two timeouts. Jones with great time slant leg. There's the post. Touchdown! The freshman Kenny Stills. Turn it over. Go up on top. 31 yards. And they're an extra point away from tying the Big 12 championship. Great job and a great effort by Stills. Mm, right knee. Right knee. Yeah, like Hang on, everybody. Right knee appeared to be down. But it's close. It is real close again. After further review, the runner's right knee was down at the half-yard line. Half, half It'll be first and goal at the half-yard line. So the power backs will come on. In college football, Drake, first quarter, Nebraska is just dominating this game. And that interception. Killer. Turned the momentum, turned the energy of the game around. Got Oklahoma to maybe have a little bit of belief, change the atmosphere in the stadium around. And all of a sudden, it's like you're watching a different game. You cannot give this offense a life. Right. 
And they've they done do it. it. They do it like they can score in a hurry. Interception and a fumble. Now DeMarco Murray will check in. Millard is right there. Here's your tight power formation. And Landry Jones dives in. There's no question about this one. Line judge quickly will jump in. There's the signal. And now they're an extra point away. I always like to do this because it's the quarterback in me. The offensive line in the last three series deserve a ton of credit for making adjustments and coming off the ball. It all started with they finally got their running game going, and I think it helped them in the pass protection. In the last three series where they've been able to generate their points, they've really controlled things up front. That's where it starts. Kenny Stills, who made that play, Herbie's from La Costa Canyon High School. And he was a four star recruit by both rivals and ESPN. And uh, just as a high school player, he had 45 catches for 914 yards and 10 touchdowns a year ago. So you're looking at a blue chip prospect right there. And he's four. just so smooth. You know, his route running, what I love to see are just the instincts. That last play, you know, he didn't score a touchdown. The way he came off that route, didn't give up on the play, and Jones finally found it. Here we go. Did some good kickoff work here tonight. Coming out to the 20. Minute and a half. Fumble on the snap. Box play, and Alexander takes him down. And it's all Sooners right now. Yeah, Bob Stoops is already calling a timeout. And the reason he is, Nebraska is not built for this kind of moment in a game. They need to run the ball and try to kill the clock and just try to get it to halftime. Let's check in with Holly. Well, this Oklahoma sideline, guys, has been remarkable. They were down 17 to nothing. Landry Jones had just thrown an interception. And the next time he went out to take the field, he was fist bumping his offensive lineman. He was actually laughing and joking, trying to get them loosened up. There hasn't been a single moment of panic over here, even though they were down 17 nothing. And that composure has helped get them right back in this ballgame. Second down and 12. Read option and hand it off to the running back. And out to the 42 yard line, Austin Box. Watch the quickness. There on Burkhead. Of Burkhead. Bur Jeremy Beal was not even blocked. I mean, it, they potentially were going to block him with Ricky Henry, but he slow played it, and I think he underestimated the speed. Good job here by. Taylor Martinez. The every... Now, do you throw one here with 25? Uh, do you try to pick up a few more on the sideline? I, th I think maybe that. I think you huh? have to try to use the size of your receivers towards the sideline and knowing that there's still enough time. If you can just pick up five or seven yards, you fire it, clock it, fire it down, and try to get Henry out there with a chance to, to get a, uh, a, a shot at a field goal. Still a lot of time with 25 seconds. On second down, Martinez got it. Incomplete. The line judge says incomplete that McNeil was out of bounds. Made a great effort on the ball. Watch his feet. And Brent Hurst jumps the route and tries to get undercut the ball. Great concentration. Oh, he's, so he's out of bounds. But right there, DeMontre Hurst, I think, thought he had a shot at interception. What focus by Mike McNeil to be able to hold on to the football, but clearly he's out of bounds. Here's a third down. Trying to pick up a few more. Alex Henry already with a 53-yarder here tonight. This would be longer than that. They go to the middle. Clock stops. They've got to spike it as quickly as they can. They certainly have got a field goal now. Kyler Reed gave it to him. That was a great play call by Sean Watson. Worked the middle of the field. Clock stops. Now you slam it down. You got 11 seconds. That was just really good play calling. A great call and a great job by Taylor Martinez of executing this offense and getting them in the field goal range. Great call right behind the linebackers in front of the safeties. It's been an area that's been a concern for Oklahoma all year. How about Reed using his body? And let's not forget, after the big loss on the first play of this drive, I think Nebraska was ready to just try to get out of here, tied up, but the big play by Burkhead got him back into being more aggressive. A 42-yarder for the lead. Perfect. Wasn't this the way it should be? Huh? Oklahoma and Nebraska. Wasn't that fun? Perfect. For a half. Great first half. Come on back, everybody.
Let's check in now with Holly and Coach Stoops. Well, Coach, your team was down 17 to nothing. What started to change so you gained some momentum? Well, we got some turnovers. Offense hit some big plays. Uh, that's what you got to do. You know, we made some plays on offense. Again, defense with the turnovers and some stops. That's how, you know, you got to play as a team, and we started doing that. Seems like big plays have been the problem for Nebraska. How do you tighten up your defense? You, you, what's that again? They've, you've given up a couple of big plays that they've scored on. How do you tighten up your defense? Yeah, well, that's it. One, one, one play early in the first quarter. The rest of the time, the run game, we played it well. So just playing with discipline. Thanks, Coach. So there we have it. Youngstown. 20 to 17. Youngstown, right? It's a battle of Youngstown. <laughs> Let's send you to New York. John Saunders and Jesse Palmer for the Capital One halftime report. Take it away, John. We welcome you back to the Dr. Pepper Big 12 Championship here on ABC. So with Kirk Herb Street and Holly Rowe, I'm Brent Musburger. Thanks for coming on back. Uh, we had an exciting first half here, Herbie. Boy, we had uh, just about everything you'd hope for in a Big 12 championship game. We had one team look like they were ready to play and dominate the game, got up to a big lead, and give Oklahoma credit. They took advantage of a big turnover once the interception by Taylor Martinez was made, and I think it really changed the complexion of the game, gave them some energy and some life and some belief. The other thing is Oklahoma's offensive line really started to assert themselves and help out a lot of their skill. And uh, how about the Nebraska kicker. Oh, yeah. Our guy, Alex Henry, getting it done. <laughs> wearing number 90. Holly Rose says he's not wearing a special kicker's shoe. He's wearing regular shoes. I don't care if he's barefoot. <laughs> Alex Henry's the best kicker I've ever seen. This guy is amazing. Who knows? Maybe this game comes down to an Alex Henry Absolutely. or Jimmy Stevens field goal. You bet. If it comes down. This game tight, should, right? Last one. The way it should be. That's right. Oklahoma, Nebraska bring down the curtain on their Big 12 battles. Remember the Cornhuskers will move to the Big Ten. We'll get a chance sometime in the second half. I want you to see the schedule next year. Apparently, Athletic Director Tom Osborne took a took a look at it. The Commissioner Jim Delaney told me he said, "Whoa, what's this?" We'll show it to you tonight. O'Hara with the kickoff, and here comes Tim Marlowe. And Marlowe for the Huskers is cut down at the 24 yard line and that was Box the linebacker who sliced him down as we take a look at the Pacific Life game summer here yeah, and Nebraska has been trying to establish to run but they've made enough plays with the passing game but you can see the, at the bottom there third downs Oklahoma yet to really get in the sink one of eight Nebraska three of nine then at the bottom points off turnover is a big story here because that really is where Oklahoma has taken advantage of not just creating turnovers but 10 points off of them you can see that Martinez has not been a threat running with the football injured ankle turf toe Read option and Helu going nowhere. Down to the 10 yard line. He exploded in the first half for a 66 yard touchdown. And let's go down below to Holly. Nebraska coach Bo Pelini told me that the change from the first quarter to the second quarter with his defense was just some missed execution. He said, I thought we were pretty stout in that first quarter. We've just got to get back to assignment football. Also, I've noticed that their quarterback, Taylor Martinez, has a couple of fresh wrapped tape jobs around those ankles. And when I asked Bo Pelini, do you guys still have your mojo? Can you get that back? He said, oh, yeah, we're feeling good. Well, they don't feel good about that four yard loss on the first play from scrimmage here because that brings up second and 14. Here comes a blitz against it, and they hit it perfectly to McNeil for a first and 10. And that was well executed by receiver and quarterback for 15 yards. And Brent, you mentioned, mentioned Jonathan Nelson came on a blitz. He actually stopped and tried to elevate to knock the ball down. But I really think that these receivers, because of the size of Mike McNeil and Kyler Reed, they're getting matched up in space against linebackers and safeties. And because of their size, Taylor Martinez using that size to his advantage. Gillian is another one of the wideouts. They have not gone to him yet. The and there's Martinez and this will be second down and long and Hello got rocked that time. And that's how you get after option football. Ask Bob Stoops on the field before the game. How do you try to deal with his own read? He said it's very simple. It's assignment football. If you're going to take the read or the dive, you take him and take him out. If you have the quarterback, take him out. And that time it worked exactly the way, of course, Bob Stoops and Brent Venables want to see. That is only the third design run, by the way, for Taylor Martinez tonight in this game. Rides the option with Hello, no daylight, nothing doing. 
going to give ground. Austin Box, the junior from Enid, Oklahoma. Uh, the pursuit of the Oklahoma defense. It's a, it was a slow developing play, Brent. You mentioned that, and I think it was just to help with the read with Martinez. But look how quick this defense is. Travis Lewis leading the way, and Austin Box, who the coaches tell you when number 12's in a game against a running team, we just seem to fit better as an entire defense. So 12 Box is key to this Sooners defense. Freshman Corey Nelson from Dallas checks in defensively for the Sooners. They're going to put only two down. Now three come down with their hands on the turf. Martinez has to step away, and then he gets crushed. Make it again, and the ball comes loose. The umpire says Sooners have recovered it. The umpire is pointing that the Sooners have the ball, and indeed they do. Box came out of there. And they brought pressure here. You get Taylor Martinez in this offense in the third down and long. And because he's still growing, Brent, as a quarterback, the ball definitely came out. But he's growing as a quarterback. And when he doesn't see his open man, he begins to panic. And he wants to trust his feet. So this time, Macon, again, the third time he's been able to get in there and penetrate the Nebraska offensive line. Two big turnovers by the quarterback. An interception going into the end zone and now a fumble. Henry Jones has one 49 yard touchdown pass tonight. Play action. To throw it away. And there was no question about anybody jumping in the air and deflecting that one back into the field of play. I mean, Landry Jones had to look at that replay a few times this week with that Oklahoma State defensive back out there. Are you kidding me? Thanks to you, it was on SportsCenter about 37 times over the weekend. Did they it use it? Yeah, yeah, quite a few times. Well, you know, I it was you play know, of the weekend. Hannah said, that's not the play of the week. She said, that may be the play of the year. I know it's a great. Landry Jones got a man deep. Broyles down to the two yard line. Ryan Broyles, a finalist for the Bolitnikoff Trophy. And the Sooners are in business. First and goal, 47 yards. This is a matchup between two great football players. A little out and up move by Ryan Broyles and the extension by the little guy and a focus to be able to hold on to the football. He just beat one of the top defensive backs also, not just Prince and Nukamara, but Eric Hague's a top, play, top flight player as well. And beat him on the out and up. Murray Miller will be the lead fullback. He comes number seven. And he is quick. Slams him down. It'll be second down and goal. Slowing their tempo down a little bit. So they're taking overpower Nebraska. Tight formation. On the play action. Gonna put it up. Landry Jones has to throw it away. Nobody open. Didn't want to risk an interception. He'll live to fight on third down. You're right about last weekend. It seems like when, when people aren't there, he's making a good decision, but he's putting it up with the band up in about the fifth row. They are one of nine on third down. We're going to go with a little bit more skill, bringing stills and broils into the game here. Tough to execute against Nebraska down inside the five when you're going with that tight, big, strong formation. You need to try to spread them out and try to create some space. Fire in zone deflected incomplete. Fourth down, and here comes Stevens. Trots onto the field quickly. Remember, he missed his last one, and Stoops wants to get him right back into the heat of it. And there we have an injured receiver down there. That is Kenny Stills, the attended receiver. Remember when Bob Stoops first saw Stevens come off the field, he knew there's a lot of game left, and he said, get your head up. Get your head up. We're going to need you to make more kicks. This one looks like about a 25 yarder. I was, let me check that. It looks like a 20 yarder. Correct myself. And he slid that one through for the tie. Herbie, take a look at this and uh, yeah, see if we get what happened here to the young man. He's in obvious pain, and the ball was thrown a little bit high. They tried to isolate him one on one. Took a little bit of a hit there Ooh. from Denard, and the way he landed, I think, caused no the injury. 
still still shaken up appear to be a little shoulder injury there on the uh, left side he took a blow when he went down O'Hara kicks it off this one's returnable from the two is Marlowe and he is thrown down on the 12 yard line by Lewis Ronell Lewis gets on him Burkhead is the running back. Martinez pulls it away. And he's going to be sacked. Frank Alexander is there. Helmet off of the quarterback. Okay, right now, Nebraska's offensive line, because they cannot run the football, and Martinez is being asked to be, have to throw, they cannot handle this speed of Oklahoma's defense. Travis Lewis that time came on the blitz. Price making again with his speed, being able to get in there to help out. Martinez loses the helmet, but at least holds on to the football that time. So, Herbie, that 62-yard drive that ended an interception, then they had a 56 yard drive for a field goal but they have really struggled minus one ten two six minus five they're just not doing anything Martinez back underneath drops it off and a fine run here by Burkhead tough run. Martinez has had to have to is throwing the ball a lot more than what he would like and we knew that coming in that Oklahoma has been a load up to stop Martinez and Burkhead and Halu from running put the game into the hands of Martinez and see if he can hurt him by throwing he's minus 10 with his rushing that's been a non factor but for Nebraska to come back and win this game on offense he's going to have to make plays and be a difference maker with his ability to throw the football. Remember the Texas Longhorns in Lincoln. There's a first down to McNeil. They tried to force the young man to throw the ball as he did there and not let him loose on the run. Oklahoma has kept him under control on the ground so far. Yes, sir. And McNeil, because of his size, a great target this time for Martinez. He's kind of throwing off his back foot, but it gives, gives McNeil a chance to make a play against Nelson, the safety. McNeil shaken up as he goes to the far sideline. Hello. Back in as the running back. Pulls it away from him and he's going to try to throw it downfield. Can't find an open target. Stays on his feet and then he is thrown down by the sack. And that was Price Macon on top of him again. That is about the third time that this young man from Corpus Christi, Texas, played at Carroll High School there. He was a reserve defensive end a year ago, but what a force tonight. Well, he's had a huge game against the run and the pass. They've moved him to the inside to play defensive tackle, but I'll tell you, Taylor Martinez needs to either throw this ball away or take off and go. The problem is Oklahoma's taking away his first option. And because of his inexperience, he panics when that first option is taken away and right away loses his vision downfield and starts to rely on his feet to make a play. End of the third. Tied at 20. This presentation of the Dr. Pepper Big 12 Championship returns after this message and word from our ABC stations. We start the fourth quarter second down and 18 for Martinez and the Cornhuskers Martinez has been sacked five times tonight and that won't get much that was Brockmeyer's second catch of the night good job of taking away that, uh, that long around making sure you're tight on coverage but with Taylor Martinez again when he has to throw it's something to keep in mind in the fourth quarter he gets uncomfortable when his primary receiver is taken away remember he's a freshman he runs an offense and it's geared as a zone read and it's an option attack and when he runs into a, into a, a roadblock like Oklahoma's defense against the run he gets uncomfortable if you take away that primary receiver. Needs 14. Incomplete. Forced to punt. Kenny the target. Play developed pretty well when you say Brent. Considering this is third down and long. He's locked in on his receiver and he just doesn't get his feet aligned on third down. Does a good job of being patient and waiting for it. He locks in on Kenny, just throws it behind him. If he puts that in front of him, I tell you, because of Fleming falling, he's got a real shot to pick up that first down. 
So here's one of their best weapons. And Henry booms this one back to Broyles on the 11 yard line. And here comes the wide receiver coming down that far sideline. And he has a fine return. That ball is going to be spotted at the 41 yard line. DeMarco Murray in as the running back. Four Nebraska turnovers, three fumbles, and an interception here tonight. Henry Jones, great play action. Drops it back off to Murray, the man he faked to, and Murray crosses midfield. Well executed, great patience, nice job by the offensive line. Off of that action, typically he goes way downfield, and what that does is it forces Nebraska to drop deep in coverage, and then he simply just drops it down to Murray. Another play action from Landry under enormous pressure. He has to drop it off to avoid the sack because Crick was coming at him again. Jared Crick, it seems like we're starting to call a lot of these names for both defenses over and over and over. And Jared Crick is having a field day as well. When Oklahoma drops back to throw, it seems inevitable that 94 for Nebraska is getting after him and pressuring him all night. Just another great Nebraska-Oklahoma game. Won't we all miss this rivalry? Murray motions out to the right. Jones is in trouble. Sacked again. And Mr. Crick is there. He's starting to resemble Indomitian Sue here tonight. I think he was even held. And he still was able to get in there. Look at Iker get his right arm hooked in there with Jared Crick. There's actually, there was a penalty down. It looked like he was held, but he still got by him. Talk about taking a game over. There's something about this stadium and Nebraska defensive linemen in the Big 12 championship. Declined the penalty to set up this third and a mile. Trouble again. Steps away from Mr. Crick. Fires back middle. Got his man. Going out of bounds is Cameron Kinney, and they were trying to strip him as he was tossed out of bounds. That effort by Kinney, I bet you Bob Stoops is going to go for this. This is third and 24. They're playing man-to-man. -man. You're isolated one-on-one. -on -one. Jones buys all the time that he can to give Kinney enough time to clear to get in front of him, and that effort sets up now a fourth and short, third and 24, to now fourth and one. They're one of three on fourth downs here tonight. This is the fourth time they've gone for it on fourth down. And they make it again with Kenny. And Amu Kamara rides him to the ground, but not before Kenny picks up the first down for the Sooners. I'll tell you, Kenny makes big plays, and Landry Jones is clutch. Now the handoff to Murray. DeMarco trying to get the edge, and he is pushed out of bounds here on the near side. The game we called last week, Landry Jones seemed to play better and get into more rhythm as a passer late in that game when the pressure was on, and it's deja vu a week later now in a Big 12 championship. Big moments. How will he step up? The offensive line's giving him time, and he puts the ball in the money. Second and five. Offensive line gives a great time this time. High. Kenny pulls it down. Amo Kamara right on him, and the spot will determine whether it's a first down or not. Oh, you mentioned Cameron Kenny Got last, last week, Brent. Six catches, 141 yards, and two touchdowns. A senior that had a career day last week is stepping up again a week later. Here's DeMarco Murray for tough yards. You're going to have to earn it against Nebraska's defense down in the red zone. And DeMarco Murray, who's always had great skill, was questioned, how is his knee going to hold up after last week? Late in this game as a senior, he wants a championship, showing some toughness there on that run. Zone, 
and incomplete. Look who's on coverage there, Eric Haig, who's back in the game, which is so important for Nebraska's defense. It's a great matchup. Remember, Broyles got the best of him earlier on an out and up. This time, he's got some separation. He's there, and it just Andrew Jones just missed him, and he had to extend himself just a little bit too much. Third and five for the Sooners. In trouble and has to throw it away. And here comes Stevens and the field goal team onto the field. There's Broyles right here, and here's Haig. He's just going to go out and down, try a little wheel around here. But watch how Haig drops into coverage, sinks, and then takes it away. That's exactly where Larry Landry Jones was looking, and all he could do is throw the ball away and set up Stevens here for potentially a go-ahead field goal. Twenty-seven yards. For the lead. Oklahoma 23, Nebraska 20. You're watching the Dr. Pepper Big 12 Championship on ABC. So here we go. High kickoff. Fielded on the 15 by Marlowe. And Marlowe to the 31. Looking to see if they can move the ball. Burkhead on a great read option. Crosses midfield. Hurst makes the stop. Now the great kicker, Henry's had a 53 tonight. This, and Brent, this time Burkhead sees that there's nowhere to go on the right side. This is the bonus round with Burkhead running the zone read. Instead of trying to make something happen with either the give or himself running right, recognizes Oklahoma's defense off to the left, collapsed down, and he cuts back and picks up again huge yards. The quarterback comes out wide as the split end. It's Burkhead for the first down to the 40-yard line. Remember, don't forget, he played quarterback in high school, both his sophomore and junior year. And, and, you know, one thing about him is he is slippery and quick and tough. He's able to run right through arm tackles. He does have that one attempt again tonight for a touchdown pass to Kyler Reed. They're keeping him right there, and they're keeping Martinez out wide to the right. Tripped up. Might have got a couple yards out of it. Jeremy Beal. And there is Henry. He has a career long of 57 yards. Two long field goals tonight. They trail it by three. That career field goal came back in 2008 as you can see on that graphic caught in one of the tight ends second down and eight Nebraska able to run the football here to start this drive something they've not been able to do the last six drives the gate Tyler gate is in this backfield with Burkhead Bring Marlowe through the formation, and now Burkhead in trouble, throws it down the middle. Martinez, incomplete. Ibaloy was pressuring Burkhead that time in a foot race, but they almost pulled this off. Well, you had a feeling that eventually they were going to try to get it to Martinez, but watch the action right here with Bur Burkhead. You knew eventually they might go to it, and he had Taylor Martinez all alone if it wasn't for the rush he would have been able to make a throw and maybe add to four attempts and four touchdowns but the late throw Nebraska catches a break because Fleming drops the ball Fleming was able to play catch up though Herbie and uh, that broke that up who knows Martinez back under center they're going to throw it can't find a receiver he'll dance now in trouble fumble on the ball battle for it there's a scrum on the field and again, Martinez limps away after making the recovery. That's twice tonight. 
He's recovered his own fumble. And when you take away the primary, Brent, I just talked about it. I've been talking about it all night. Because of his youth, he just starts to panic. He starts to rely on his feet. He doesn't come off his primary and find his second or third option. And he starts to look around for where can I run. But against this Oklahoma defense, they're containing him. How fortunate is he that the ball once again fell back into his arm, arms for recovery? They were moving the ball pretty well from the Wildcat with Burkhead on the ground. There's the fair catch back at the 10. Now they're up against it on the clock, putting themselves in a hole at the end of that sequencing of those play calls. Interesting that they tried to catch Oklahoma's defense off guard. If Burkhead was ready to throw and he had time, he did have him open. Boy, but the, the second and third down backfired on him. But let's not forget, Nebraska has three timeouts. Oklahoma hasn't had a lot of uh, consistent success tonight running the ball. So you've got to believe that Nebraska still is going to get this ball back. And a shot with Alex Henry, our guy, to try to kick it to maybe get it into overtime. Yeah, I'm getting that down for Henry as much as I can. <laughs> Marco Murray. Yeah. There's a toss play to number seven. To stay in bounds, and David back on the field makes the tackle. What a great job by Levante David. Nebraska knows they've got to make plays right now. They need a three and out, and who do they go to? Levante David, who's just able to go right by Gabe Eichert, the left guard, could not make the block, and again, because of the acceleration and speed of David going right by him. Landry Jones up under center with Murray in the you can see they're just running time down. Yep. They're bringing that play clock down before they snap it. Precious seconds are running away on Nebraska. Here's Murray. Out to the 15. Might have to stay tuned after the game for your late local news over most of these ABC stations. Then over on ESPN, you can turn over to Sports Center for post game analysis of this one, and you'll find out about Auburn and Oregon going to the BCS championship. Congratulations to Gene Chiswick. Remember when there was a time when folks were unhappy about him being named head coach at Auburn? None of that tonight, huh? <laughs> See, they're just bringing time down. It was such a critical possession for Nebraska. That's a huge third down, obviously, here, Brent. Drops it off, and it is complete to Kenny Stills. And short of the first down, and they, so it'll be fourth down, and here comes the punter. Now, don't be surprised if Nebraska doesn't come after him. Yeah. The Cornhuskers are going to call timeout. You're going to see some black shirts out there. Great job defensively for Nebraska when you consider the fact that Oklahoma, on third down tonight, one of 16. Now, Tressway's last punt was not a good one. They're going to set a return. Here is Burkhead. Slips free. 35. Burkhead out to the 41. They need about 20 yards to give Henry a chance at his career long of 57. Burkhead is alongside Martinez. So there is the quick slant to Brockmeyer. He's got about three catches here tonight. It's interesting. They're going back to Martinez, feeling that they need to have a little bit more of a, a veteran, experienced player back there taking these snaps. Second and seven. Here's the blitz, and they sacked him again. Tony Jefferson, the freshman from Chula Vista, California, rolls through, and that's the seventh sack of the night. You get Nebraska into a passing situation, you're going to have some success as a defense. Austin Box, they brought the house. They brought one more than Nebraska could handle. Here comes the freshman, Jefferson. He's scot free, the right guard, Ricky Henry, late to come out. Good call there by Brent Venables and Bob Stoops. McNeil, 44, is off to the right in the slot. Tyler Reed is off to the left. Both have had some success on quick slants for Taylor Martinez where he gets the ball out of his hand fast. 
near side complete but short of the first down out of bounds Brandon Kinney and they keep the clock moving so he was stopped that's a big play and a great throw by Martinez a good call to get the ball out and get it out of his hands to set up a shot here at fourth down here's your ball game that'll do it Oklahoma goes to the desert the Sunners have won the Dr. Pepper Big 12 championship. The victory formation will come out here. Huge crowd on hand, larger than a year ago, 78,810. And Big Red will head to the Big Ten. Brent, I just talked about how important you knew Nebraska would probably try a quick slam to get the ball out. Nebraska trying to get a chance, trying, as you said, to get it to Henry, but tight coverage by Hurst took away the quick slam. Nowhere to go with the football. Fourth down. Martinez is back. The ball's thrown behind him a little bit, but I'll tell you, Oklahoma didn't feel threatened downfield. They knew it was going to be a quick throw, so they tightened up their coverage, and they took away any chance at all for Kenny or the, any of the other Nebraska wide receivers to make a play. Good job by Bob Stoops, and again, Venables tightening their coverage up there on fourth and short. A winner again. In the Dr. Pepper Big 12 championship game, Bob Stoops and the Sooners. They'll be playing either Connecticut or Stanford. We'll find out for sure tomorrow night. So the two friends from Youngstown, Ohio. What a night for that young man, Travis Lewis. Let's go down to Holly Rowe with Coach Stoops. Well, Coach, they had a chance to get within field goal range. How nervous were you on that last play? Uh, you know, you don't have time for nerves. You're just playing ball. Kids did a great job, and, uh, you know, the assistant coaches had some nice calls at the end, and kids made plays. Your defense took control of this game, created some turnovers, and changed the course of the game. How do you describe their performance? Really well. You know, in the first half, we weren't bad. We had two bad plays in the first half. And I told the kids, you ought to be encouraged at halftime. Of all their yards, they got 90 of them on two plays. The rest of it, we were playing the run game great, getting after the quarterback, forcing turnovers. Just stick with it. Another classic Nebraska-Oklahoma game. What sense of nostalgia do you have, Coach, as they leave? Yeah, it's pretty special. I'm, uh, I, it's, uh, it's pretty neat, uh, really. The history here and the great coaches before us. So I just feel fortunate and lucky. Thank you. Blessed. Thank you. Well, here comes their reward. A trip to the desert, Glendale, Arizona, the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl on January 1st, 8.30 Eastern on ESPN. Oklahoma will play either Connecticut or Stanford. We will find out tomorrow night at 8.15.